Good morning. It's great to be here. Um, and to those who've joined us in the live stream community, thank you for being with us. Those uh, here in the church plant, thank you uh, for gathering as God's people. Um, as we gather, we worship God as the creator of all peoples. We pay respects to First Nations peoples, particularly those who belong to and have cared for the land on which we gather and worship today. We also welcome visitors who are with us, and particularly those here for the baptism of Austin. Uh, very exciting, and we'll see and hear more about that a little later on. Our opening sentences today and our invocation actually are a timely reminder of our own baptism. All of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death, so that just as Christ was raised, we too might walk in newness of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's confess our sins in the presence of God and of each other. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we know that we are born as imperfect people and are unable to escape our sinful human nature. We confess to you, Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake, forgiving us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Christ lived, died, was raised for us to bring us new life and the assurance of God's pardon and his love. And so, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I announce the grace of God to all of you. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. His love and forgiveness set you free, strengthen you to do his will and keep you in eternal life. The peace of God be with you. We stand as forgiven and loved children of God. Amen. Yes. 
resurrected, born again, rescued from the power of death, child of air and child of light, now you breathe the Spirit's breath, you can live for timeless days, you are not the devil's toy, bought by Jesus, owned by God. is still one of my favorite baptism songs. I'm going to ask parents and godparents to come forward and and just come and gather around the font here um, wherever you can best find a spot um, is best. And um, is this Pacey? I haven't met Pacey. Hello Pacey. Hello. (laughs) And Lord Jesus Christ says authority in heaven and earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. The word of God teaches that we are all born sinful and unclean, but God washes us clean in the waters of baptism. We're born again, born anew as his children. Through baptism, our Heavenly Father forgives us our sins, unites us with our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we share in his death and resurrection and the Holy Spirit renews us and gives us eternal life. And so I address you as parents, Lisa and Luke, do you present Austin for holy baptism? If so, say, yes, I do. And I'll address all of you and uh, godparents as well. And um, so it's Mandy and Alex and Sharon and Chris in absentia. Uh, so we remember them as well and we'll have a little gift for them but I address you since you've brought Austin to be baptized you're responsible for his upbringing in the church remember him in your prayers bring him to services in God's house and teach him the Lord's Prayer the Creed the Ten Commandments remind him of his baptism daily set him a good example and provide for his instruction in the faith do you intend to do this if so say yes I do All right, this is going to be a bit tricky and sorry for our camera people. Um, The Lord made the deaf hear and the dumb to speak. Therefore, in his name, I say, be opened so that you may hear and speak the word of God. And Austin received the mark of the Holy Cross as a sign that Christ the crucified has redeemed you. We're going to pray. Um, And as we're praying um, and thanking our Heavenly Father for the waters of baptism, uh, I'll end each petition with gracious father I invite you to respond we thank you and neglectful of me I was going to give you guys these so you're not straining to see the screen although you can probably see the one at the back all good it's more there so let's pray for your spirit who in the beginning moved over the waters breathing life into your creation gracious father we thank you for water with which you nourish and sustain us and all living things gracious father we thank you for the waters of the flood by which you cleanse the world and save Noah and his family gracious father we thank you for the waters of the Red Sea through which you led your people out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land gracious father we thank you for the waters of the Jordan in which your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Gracious Father, we thank you for the baptism of his death, by which your Son set us free from death and opened up the way to eternal life. Gracious Father, we thank you. Send down your Holy Spirit, so that as Austin is baptised in this water, he may be united with Christ in his death and resurrection, through whom we give you praise and honour, now and forever. Amen. Austin received the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ who says, let the children come to me and do not stop them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And Austin, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he gave them his own prayer. So receive the prayer of the Lord as all of us pray together. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Parents and godparents, and I'll get the congregation to join in as well in part of this, I ask you to answer on behalf of Austin as he renounces the devil and declares allegiance to the triune God. Uh, so first, just to you guys, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I ask the congregation to join in sharing uh, this answer. Do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, who gets the job of holding? Is that you, Lisa? <laughs> so I'll ask you to bring him so that his head is over the, the font. Austin John Slattery, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's all right, you can pick him up. <laughs> Martin Luther used to say when a child cried at a baptism, it was the devil screaming as he was ejected. <laughs> Could be that or the cold water, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's pray. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth by water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his Spirit so that you receive eternal life. Amen. Now, if you can stay in position for a moment, uh, we've got a couple of gifts that the congregation wish to present. First, the candle. Thank you, Dave. And Brenda. I might start over here. I have a little something to say. Sure. 21 years ago, our family came to Canberra and we landed in this church and have been, were made very, very welcome. At that time, Pastor Detlev Foscarell was the, the minister in charge of the congregation and there were a lot of baptisms and I was struck by a beautiful tradition which I observed Every child who was baptised, every young person, every adult was given a plant. The plant was always struck from the same line of plants. It's a begonia rex. And this is actually a continuation of that line of plants. It turns out there's one that remains in the um, courtyard of our church. If you go out there, you'll see it flowering. Um, some time ago, I noticed that a whole branch had been knocked off and it was hanging limp, and I took it home, and um, yeah, it strikes very easily. And so I have a little line of these at home. Anyway, fast forward to six weeks ago, seven weeks ago now, isn't it, Darren? Something you? like that. <laughs> yes, um, Pastor Darren was um, installed as our new minister, and Tony and I were honoured to be asked to be the congregational seniors <laughs> to, um, to present a symbolic gift to, to the pastor to welcome him. Um, it took no time for me to tell Gary, I know exactly what we should give them, a little him and, and Julie, a cutting of this particular plant. I told him the story and Pastor Darren immediately said, 
that's a great tradition. I'd really like to reinstate it. So at home, I've got a dozen or so tiny little ones waiting to, to grow. I did have one baby at home. I've stuck a little bit of an extra sprig there. You never know, it might strike. But here we go. Thank you, Brenda. Not a gardener then, Austin. Not so keen about that one. <laughs> Let's pray for Austin. Heavenly Father, we join you with Lisa and Luke in thanking you for giving them Austin and adopting him as your child in holy baptism here. Strengthen his faith by your Holy Spirit so that his sinful self may die each day and he may rise to new life with Christ forever. Amen. And I ask you, as members of Holy Cross, to receive Austin, whom God has given to us as a brother in Christ. Pray for him, be a good example to him, and I invite you to welcome him with applause. <laughs> After the service, there's a few more gifts over here. Make sure we grab them for you. Um, but the peace of the Lord be with you. You may return to your seats. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for new life in Christ. Thank you, loving God, that we have been baptised into Christ's death. We pray that as you raised him from death, we too live a new life, dead to sin, but alive for you in Jesus Christ. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today is from uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, from verse 7. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for when I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonour will never be be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, beginning at verse 24. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have been called the master of the house, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body, both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Ah, excellent. Nice to see you all. Now look, there's a lot to like about our church and coming here on Sundays. There's some really good things about church here. Some things I really like and I want to find out what you like. You might even want to find out what our congregation likes. I'll start by saying what something that I really like is the awesome... I can't spell, by the way. You might have to help. Awesome music. When I come here on Sundays, I love the awesome music. It's live. It's real. And Paul's doing it today. I love the music. What do you like about coming here on Sundays? Is there anything you guys like? Yes? You like baptisms? I like them too. I love seeing someone baptised. I really like watching old people get baptised because when they get their head down there and get wet. But I like old people, like young people. My two daughters were baptised right here too. So I love a good baptism. I also like sometimes we have great stories. I like the stories. Anything else that you guys like about coming to church? Yes, another thing. You like kids' church? Yeah, I I agree. Fantastic. 
children's addresses, <laughs> talk, um, especially the ones by me. Yeah. I, oh, the other thing I do, yes. You like? I was going to say, good. Do, do you like the cakes or the? What do you like best about morning tea? Biscuits. I like that awesome coffee. Um, you can't live without good coffee, can you? Life's just too short. In fact, I think Jesus said something about coffee. Um, oh, the other thing I really like is we read the Bible. I actually like, I really like the Bible stories. I like that sometimes they're wacky and weird, but there's good Bible stories. Anything else? Yep. You like the paintings. You like the artwork, do you? You must be an artist in residence. I'm going to call it artwork. Is that all right? Is that, yep. Yep. Good. These ones up here and around here. Yes. Oh, you know, the other thing I really like is that every Sunday we go up and we have what we call communion. Um, I really like that. You know, the scary thing is I'm going to have a list that's longer than the piece of paper. That we, I like communion. Um, you know, another thing I really like, we did it before, that we forgive each other. And God forgives us too. You know, it's a thing we do every Sunday and we don't think about it much about it. But the world wouldn't be a very good place if we didn't forgive each other, if we didn't care for each other and say, it's okay. Um, anything else that we do that you like here? Yes, more? Oh, passing the peace. Yeah, I'll slip this in here. Passing the peace. I missed it when we, when we were being COVID mad. I missed it then when we couldn't give a person a bit of a cuddle and a bit of shaking hands, a bit of high-fiving. Anything else? I, like, I do like the fact that we pray together and our members have some awesome prayers, really good prayers. I, I sit up the back there normally and I look up and I like the architecture. I think the bricks are a bit bland, but I do like the clubhouse, our home here I love the the um, trusses I like them so I like the house or the church we could call it a church I think it's good it's warm cozy like that anything else what else ah oh. do you listen during the sermons Um, the dad jokes in the sermons and the sermons particularly to love a good dad joke like the sermons. We've got, yeah, there's more things and there's more dad jokes coming today. Um, yeah, there is. I'm sorry. So I've got awesome music. I've got great stories. We've got, oh, we read the Bible, yes, yes. There's a thing that we call a liturgy where, you know, Darren says something and we say something. It's a bit of a back and forward. Do you like that or do you not like that? I like the liturgy. I can't spell it, but I like it. <laughs> oh, and we pray for each other. Oh, I like the candles too. Do you like the candles? I love it when we have incense. I would like more incense, um, but I, yep, that's good too. So there's lots of things. There's more things to like, but I've got them up there. I've got the big things up there. Now, there are some things that we say are so important that we can't do without. And there's a word we use for them, and it's, um, I'm going to write it up here, sacrament. S-A-C, help me. R-E-M, R-A-M, E-N-T-S. Sacraments. 
It's a weird word. It's old-fashioned, 1500s. But it's about the things that are just, we can't do without when we get together as church. Now, there's a lot of debate about what things we can't do about. Our good friends over the road, the Catholics, say there are seven of them. Seven sacraments we can't do without. The Baptists say there's only two. Um, Luther said there were three. Now, I think they're all wrong. I think there are four. And I'm a budding theologian, so I'm probably right. And I'm up the front and I'll tell you what they are. So, the really important things, the things we can't do without... Look... Today especially, we can't do without a baptism. Baptism's really important. I think it's a sacrament because Jesus did it. He told his disciples to do it and they've done it and the church has done it ever since Jesus was here. Very important. What else? Well, we know that communion holy communion Jesus did it he told his disciples to do it they did it and we've been doing it for as long as church has existed so going up having some bread and wine being blessed that's one of the sacraments too according to most people who are important you know the next thing I think in my mind you can't have a good church you can't have church without actually reading the Bible reading the book and telling the stories now I don't mean we have to have sermons in fact I don't think great stories or sermons are are always critical in fact some churches have really lousy sermons but actually reading God's word is, I think, fundamental. And guess what? Jesus did it. He told his disciples to do it. And we've been doing it ever since. So that's three. And I'm going to pick one more out that I think is a thing that changes the world. And that is... Yeah, coffee. <laughs> Is this weird thing down here. Every time Christians get together, they remember that God forgives them and loves them. And they tell each other that they are forgiven too. And guess what? Jesus did it. The disciples did it. And Jesus told his disciples to get out and do it for as long as they were his friends. So, you can have a church without morning tea. I know it's difficult. You can even have a church without awesome music. I won't be there, but you can have it. You can have a church without good liturgy. In fact, there are a lot of churches that have loud. You can have a church without passing the peace. You can have a church without a really nice building. In fact, you can have a church without a building at all. You can have a church without prayers. You can have a church without candles. Can you have a church without coffee? It could be the fifth sacrament. We'll think about that later. You can have a church with lousy children's talks or no children's talks at all. You can have a church without good stories. You can have a church without passing the peace. But I don't think church and God's message to us can happen without this thing that we saw this morning with Austin, baptism, wonderful, without actually reading the Bible, God's word, without sharing the meal and without saying to each other and recognising that God forgives us and loves us. So, Back to your seats. I want you to cause a bit of mischief and then come back a bit later for some 
Excellent morning tea. Back to your seats. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how wonderful that you draw us to yourself through the waters of baptism and the prompting of your spirit. Open our hearts to hear you speak into our lives. Amen. 
Baptism is always such an exciting event, isn't it? I mean, for, a, for an adult or an adolescent, it's the joy of discovery in, in learning the mysteries of faith and the joy of life in Christ and then boldly presenting for baptism into God's church and family. For an infant, a young child, it's the joy of the parents in the gift of a little person to love and to journey with and for parents and the godparents to plant the seeds of faith that they'll prayerfully nurture and feed and hopefully see mature into a life of faith of the child's own or at the very least a chance to continue to pray and to plant seeds in the hope of renewed faith at some point in life. What about for the child themselves? They might not remember much. Okay, dad joke number one. Perhaps you've seen this meme. The reference to drowning actually is quite pertinent. Um, it's an image used in scripture to illustrate the drowning, the death of the old self and the raising of the new. And our reading from Romans, which it's actually a reading we often use at funerals, and I say that not to bring a downer, but to, to demonstrate how powerful it is. In Romans 6, do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Martin Luther bless him, not everything he said was great, but this one is okay. He would talk about the baptismal life as the old nature in us, with all of its flaws being drowned and dying through daily sorrow for sin and through repentance, and that daily a new person comes forth, rises up to life, to live before God in righteousness and holiness. So, Austin's old nature has been drowned and God has raised him a new person. Born again, or born anew is perhaps a better term, or, or born from above is the scriptural translation. So now his life will be rosy, yes, perfect in every way, without any hassles or suffering. Doesn't quite work like that. There's a lot of mystery in baptism but there's no magic God is at work but Austin is born anew still to live in this world with all its realities you may have seen or read this book by Fred some amongst us know Fred um, the censorship is mine although as I look at it probably could have done a little bit better um, the, the gist of that book um, is and the saying is that baptism, that life with God, doesn't remove us from the, the stuff of life, the it, because um, I'm not allowed to say the other word from the pulpit. Um, the it still happens, but as baptised people of God, grace abounds. Grace surprises. Not grace as in a prayer you might say before a meal, although there's a connection that we won't unpack here nor grace as in style and elegance, but grace as a constant state of living, living in God's love, living in God's forgiveness, God's acceptance, his forgiveness when we mess life up, God's presence, God's promises, when the stuff, the it, hammers us or brings us down or challenges our sense of fairness. In our Old Testament reading today, God called Jeremiah to be his prophet, but then we heard a litany of the devastation and the disturbance that Jeremiah went through in living that call. Although in the end he was able to say, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, even amidst it all. And even in our gospel reading, Jesus describes life on this earth and life for those who follow him as anything but rosy. And yet he assures his disciples, he assures us, that the hairs on our head are counted and cared for, that we are more valuable than the birds that he has an eye on and that he's got our back in eternity. When Martin Luther was tempted, when he was in doubt, when 
he was in depression, which would often happen, or near despair, he would remind himself, Baptizatusum! I am baptized! And he would shout it. Because it reminded him that despite what the world threw at him, whatever the world threw at him, he was baptized. He was a child of God. He was forgiven. He was in the midst of eternity. He lived in grace. Grace abounded. Grace surprised. And that would bring a whole new perspective on life in the here and now. Jesus said, those who find their life will lose it. and Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. It's the irony of life in this world and of the baptismal life. The more preoccupied we come with our, our self-preservation, our own needs and wants, our earthly comfort, the more dissatisfying life becomes. If we let go of that stuff, drowning the old self, losing that life, the more we find we can bask in God's grace, appreciate what living as baptised people means, what being forgiven and forgiving, as Gary shared, what that means. We see the needs of those around us. We love God in loving them. And in that truly find our meaning in life. And we also find that even when the stuff happens, when it happens and it's still, well, it's still it, yes, grace abounds and we are not alone in the it. So I want to thank Austin for reminding us of that today. Uh, thank you for letting us witness the mystery of your birth to new life. Not that you had much say in it, uh, but in doing so, you reminded those of us baptised sinners, us drowned and resurrected rats, the splashed and dripping people of God, that despite what we may be going through right now, we are truly loved and alive, now and in eternity. And all the people said, Amen. Oh, that was a bit weak. <laughs> And all the people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how wonderful that you draw us to yourself through the waters of baptism and the daily prompting of your spirit. Amen. me. Mm -hmm.
like you. So many live in pain. Others are trapped by fear. Fill us with your spirit of love so we keep on loving Jesus, loving in you. Lord, you have given us the privilege of being your servants, telling others about you and showing your compassion through our actions. Give us courage to serve you and not to count the cost. Amen. God of blessing, the universe sings of your glory. Deepen our gratitude for all you have made and awaken in us a renewed commitment to care for the earth and each other. Inspire leaders with openness to listen to those most affected by climate change and with courage to act urgently and wisely so that our common home may be healed and people and generations to come may delight in it. Thank you for trees which remind us that with the light you provide, we can grow to be more than we thought we could. Thank you for delicate flowers, which withstand heavy storms, a reminder of your commitment and care for us and your creations. Thank you for the seas and oceans that, despite the plastic pollution, are mighty and full of life, a testament to your to the synergy of your power and grace. Thank you for the birds that wake us in the morning and the possums that wake us in the night. Thank you for the wonders of, of nature. You never fail to amaze us with this wonderfully precious world we call home. We remember so well the effects of a healing world in the f of a heating world, in the fires that devastated so much of Australia. We thank you for the firefighters that came from other lands uh, to aid us in our time of need. We thank you that Australian firefighters and those of other countries are helping Canada fight fires which may continue to burn until snow falls. Protect those who battle the flames and guard those who must flee because of the blazes and give them safety and strength. Bring your comfort to those who have lost houses, possessions and businesses. Before you, all human beings are precious for we all are created in your image. Look with favour on those disabled who have suffered and continue to suffer discrimination and abuse. Bring about change in the lot of the blind and the lame, the deaf and the dumb, and those who suffer various degrees of mental handicap. Grant your abundant blessing upon those organisations and individuals who are devoted to the care of the sick and the disabled. Fill their hearts with abundant joy. May they be endowed with all the spiritual and material resources they need. For those who are sick, may the risen Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge that you are present not only in their health but also in their weakness, pain and suffering. We remember before you Fiona, Joan, Joanna, Albert, Jean, Suzanne, 
Laurie, Matt, Sheba and Klaus and Irene and others known to us personally. We also remember those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. For the Thornton, von Brandenstein, Wendt and Watson families. Help them to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit with them and the fellowship of the church family around them until that time of reuniting in your heavenly kingdom. We welcome Luke and Lisa bringing Austin to be baptised, a sign of their love for him and a witness to Austin being a member of your family, a family that extends beyond time and place. We ask that we might live as members of your family through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Who wants to come with me? Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Go now and walk in newness of life, for Christ was raised from the dead, therefore do not be afraid. What God speaks to you in the dark, proclaim boldly in the light. Take up your cross and follow the Christ. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> 